my kind of covered myself over the baby in an attempt to protect him, but that didn't give me any way to get to my firearm. Like, go now! But I was able to get some distance. I pushed back away from him. He still wouldn't leave and step, you know, kept confronting me. You sure it's okay? Back the f off. So eventually I pulled the, the firearm on him and told him to get away from me. Drive away! All right, index, index, index. I got this. Well, what'd you think? Well, that was tough because you had two different threats, what felt like threats coming at you. That scenario going on, which I didn't feel comfortable with. Right, that and was then clear. And came over. Yeah. And um, that was already shook me up, so, you know. Okay. Once you kind of felt, because I could see once you felt what he was doing, he was pushing, 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 and rather than actually making a decisive move, you were kind of afraid of offending him or whatever it may be. And we live in a society where if you tell someone to back up, to look away, don't, don't, you know, not to talk to me, well, you, you know, you're considered rude and people don't want to hurt people's feelings. When they start getting like this close and reaching, just say, you know, you are way beyond my personal space. If you don't let someone inside your reactionary gap, you, you increase your odds exponentially because now, you're not letting me physically get my hands on you. Yep. If he really wanted to, he probably could have. He could have overpowered you. Yeah, swept Absolutely. you up, taking you down. Especially women, they have to understand disparity of force. Men are typically bigger and much stronger and can overpower you. And the way he he went for the kid, I mean, that would have hurt a lot if it was a real <clears throat> baby, right. a real child. Yeah. And so, I mean, it would have been that much harder with a screaming baby. Oh yeah. For yeah, me yeah. to hold on to her, she yeah. would be freaking out too. So. Absolutely. You want to work on creating distance and moving? Shooting one hand, protect each drill? Yeah, definitely. Let's just uh, take what we learned here and go yeah. to the range and do some training. All right, sounds good. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go do it. We're gonna work on uh, creating space while we're drawing our weapon and what we call the protect e drill, which we teach with children if we're holding a child or if we're walking with a loved one. If we have that child in our support arm, as you draw your pistol, you'll just quarter your body away. Okay. Obviously wanting to put yourself in front of the child and the adversary. We're basically shielding that child behind us as we're drawing the weapon, driving the gun out. So our body's slightly bladed, but using our body as protection for our own loved one. So think about as you move away, now you're going to move the garment, draw, and aim in. As I aim in, I rotate the shoulder forward, putting that baby even further away from the adversary. Okay. And as we shoot, you can sidestep back, or you can also kind of pivot your hips back, keep your toes pointed while you're aiming in, and then just heel toe backwards. Oh, okay. So you can kind of have two different options, see which one works best for you. All right. So I'll do it live fire one time for you. And do then you we'll want to hold the baby? I'll simulate the baby. <laughs> that thing looks heavy. <laughs> so we get in the altercation, you know, we're exchanging verbals, telling him to get away, get away. I see a weapon or he goes for the baby. I'm gonna turn, draw, as I work my way back. Issuing out commands, get back, get back, get back. Follow him down to the ground. Make sure myself and the baby are protected. And then I can, of course, scan my area, scan my 360. Again, check the baby, make sure that she's not hurt. And then we can go to admin and then reholster the weapon. Okay. Okay? All right, let's go here to this target on the left. I'll be right here on your left side. Okay. On the command of gun, we'll be simulating that he's going for the kid. All right, going high. Shooter ready. Ready. Stand by. Gun! All right, excellent, excellent. All right, let me take the kid. I'm sure with that shot placement, looks awesome down there. That would definitely deter me. All and right. we'd be good to go. So good now deal. let's go back out and run the scenario again, see how you do. Okay. All right. The FPD crew briefly discussed how the second scenario would differ from the first. For this scenario, Lori is arriving at her destination and the child is in the back seat. She must safely remove the child and make her way to the store. Situational awareness is always something that you have to have. You have to know your environment and uh, prepare you know, for the worst. lot more distance. I was able to get to my firearm. Once I drew the pistol on him, I wanted to go into the store to get help. 
it's amazing how fast a situation like that can boil over. But if you keep your bearings and you do the right things, you can end it rather quickly too. Hi, index, index, index. I think I did a much better job the second time around protecting the baby, giving some space, but making sure that the person that I was trying to protect the most was away from the danger. I didn't do that the first time. You created distance decisively. When did you see him coming up to you? Um, I didn't see him right away. I noticed there was someone in the car. He kind of surprised me. He was pretty close by the time I caught him. Yeah. And that's you also knowing that it's coming. She was not privy to the scenario, but she knew something was gonna happen. So now you take that same scenario to somebody just doing their day to day. They got the coffee in their hand, the kid, cell phone, all these things that they're thinking about. Now you see how fast it unfolds and you're expecting it to happen. Mm -hmm. Obviously there was a marked improvement on her second run. She made more decisive actions. She cr created distance. One of the biggest things is she didn't fire any rounds. She didn't shoot them. And that's fine. We're not advocating anybody to shoot people unnecessarily. I was able to end a scenario using a firearm to slow it all down and make sure that that person went away, but I didn't have to fire. I'm proud of that fact. And she protected her baby, didn't drop the baby. She learned a lot. Just because you carry a gun doesn't mean that it has to be the thing that you go to and that you have to shoot somebody. At the end of the day, if you can use it to walk away from the situation without anybody having new holes in them, I think that's successful. All in all, Lloyd did awesome. Thanks for watching our sneak peek of First Person Defender, our new online series. If you want to see all the episodes, go to YouTube, type in First Person Defender. Obviously, just having a gun is not enough. You have to get training.